Alrighty, hello everyone, welcome back to Mouse Reacts. We're going to get right into Paranormal Files. I'm running late on trying to get started. Matter of fact, I'm an hour later than I wanted to start. So this could be running late for me and I'm already going to be losing sleep. So with that being said, do ch do go down and press the like button, share, uh, and um, all that good jazz. And don't forget to also follow us so you can continue to get updates when the new videos come out. But anyways... Tonight's quick reaction, as quick as three hours can go, The Gangster Ghosts of Chicago by The Paranormal Files. So, a um, true crime slash uh, ghost hunt thing. So, we'll see where this all goes to. And let's get going, because we're already in for a long one. Let's go. Go, 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 go. go. Hi, Colin. The history of the city of Chicago is obviously closely tied in with gangsters, <laughs> mobsters, and organized crime. So, let's talk about it. The rise of the Chicago Outfit, or one of the major organized crime families in Chicago, marks a significant chapter in American organized crime history. Born in Calabria, Italy in 1878, James Big Jim Colosimo immigrated to Chicago in the hmm. late 19th century. Initially working as a bartender, Jim quickly recognized the profitability of Chicago's vice industries, including gambling, prostitution, and bootlegging. Leveraging his connections within the Italian-American community and forging alliances with politicians and law enforcement, Colosimo rose through the ranks, establishing himself as a prominent figure in Chicago's criminal underworld by the early 1900s. Colosimo's empire expanded rapidly, encompassing brothels, speakeasies, and gambling dens across Chicago. His keen mm. business sense, coupled with his ability to navigate the city's political landscape, allowed him to amass considerable wealth and influence. Colosimo's operations provided a blueprint for future criminal enterprises, setting the stage for the emergence of the notorious Chicago outfit. The onset of Prohibition in 1920 presented a golden opportunity for organized crime to flourish. With the sale and distribution of alcohol prohibited, bootlegging, <clears throat> or selling illegal alcohol, became a lucrative enterprise, mm -hmm. and Colosimo was quick to capitalize on this new market. However, his reluctance to fully embrace the bootlegging trade would ultimately lead to his downfall. In May of 1920, Big Jim Colosimo was gunned down and murdered in his own cafe, allegedly at the behest of his second wife, Dale Winter. Speculation abounded regarding the motive behind the assassination, with theories ranging from Colosimo's refusal to fully commit to bootlegging to his marital issues. Regardless of the motive, though, Colosimo's death paved the way for a new era in Chicago's criminal underworld. Now, with Colosimo out of the picture, control of the Chicago outfit fell into the hands of Al Capone, a ruthless and ambitious gangster. Al wasted no time in consolidating his power, using violence, murder, and intimidation to eliminate rivals and expand the outfit's operations. Under Al's leadership, the outfit became synonymous with organized crime in America, dominating the bootlegging trade and exerting influence over politics and law enforcement. The early years of Al Capone's reign were marked by intense and bloody violence, as rival gangs vied for control of Chicago's lucrative bootlegging territories. So if we're going to explore the bloody history of mobs here in Chicago, Illinois, we have to make a stop by this place, a location that's supposedly haunted according to ghost tours that run in this city, the Holy Name Cathedral Catholic Church here in downtown Chicago. So. As the story goes, the Northside Irish gang that was warring with Al Capone's Chicago outfit used to have their headquarters right across the street from here at a flower shop. The guy who actually ran that flower shop was one of the leaders of the North Irish gang. His name was Dean O'Banion. He was a really good person in his community. People absolutely loved him, but he had a dark side where he was ordering hits, you know, having people murdered. That flower shop was across the street right here. And Dean, in 1924, was actually murdered himself right out front of the flower shop. So right over there is where mm. Dean was killed, leader of the gang. But after Dean was murdered, a man named Jaime Weiss took over his position of control. Jaime was a traditional Chicago gangster, but he was in, like I said, hot competition with Capone and his outfit. So on October 11th, 1926, we're led to this location. On that day, Al Capone's men sat in a boarding house across the street they loaded up their machine guns and when they saw jaime weiss the leader of the north irish gang exit his vehicle they opened fire and over here this is where you can still see remnants of this crime now people have said this is a bullet hole right here people stick their finger in here after they get married it's not confirmed to be a bullet hole a lot of people think that it was something that was drilled in there's no explanation mm -hmm. but the bullet holes are down here. Those look a little there are markings people. over here there you go. that are actually from the Tommy gun fire. Now that hail of bullets would end up killing Jaime. 
he actually was shot 10 times. He was spewing blood everywhere. He stumbled out into the street right here and he died. People have said they've seen his ghost around here. They've heard phantom gunfire in the middle of the night. But it's interesting because in a city like Chicago, where everything is so nice and modernized and clean, I mean, there's a Whole Foods right here. There's just, there's murder everywhere. There's elements of mob violence and, and dark history scattered throughout the city. But I just wanted to show you guys this because I think it's an interesting, uh, interesting part of chicago you know mm -hmm. crucial part of mob history you go shop at whole foods you walk out you'd have no idea that one of the mob leaders was murdered right there and another one was murdered right here in front of this church you can still see the bullet holes today Bad corner to be i bet to actually you can <laughs> see where they patched the up North the bullet holes. <laughs> <laughs> all right the resulting conflict known as the beer wars claimed numerous lives and brought widespread chaos to the city's streets However, Al Capone and his Chicago outfit emerged victorious after they eliminated their rivals and consolidated the outfit's control over the entire bootlegging trade. One of the most notorious events of Capone's reign, however, was the St. Valentine's Day Massacre of 1929. Mm. On February 14th, seven members of rival gangster Bugs Moran's organization were brutally murdered in a garage on Chicago's north side. While Al Capone to this day is widely suspected of orchestrating the massacre, he managed to completely evade prosecution, further cementing his reputation as untouchable. It should be noted that those seven murders still remain unsolved to this very day. But despite his iron grip on Chicago's underworld, Al Capone's reign of terror came to an end in 1931. Following an extensive investigation by federal authorities, Al Capone was indicted on charges of tax evasion and sentenced to prison. His incarceration marked the beginning of the end for the Chicago outfit's dominance, as internal power struggles and external pressures began to take their toll. And ultimately, with Al Capone behind bars, leadership of the Chicago outfit passed to figures like Frank Nitti and Paul Richa. While these successors sought to maintain the outfit's influence, they faced significant challenges from law enforcement and rival gangs that were growing stronger by the day. The outfit's operations diversified, encompassing gambling, labor racketeering, and other illicit activities, but its prominence began to wane in the face of changing societal attitudes and law enforcement crackdowns. But despite its internal challenges, the Chicago outfit continued to exert influence beyond the city limits. Through strategic alliances with other criminal organizations and corrupt officials and politicians, the outfit expanded its operations into neighboring cities and states, including setting up shop in Las Vegas and Hollywood. Its involvement in labor unions, political corruption, and legitimate businesses further enriched its members and ensured a steady stream of revenue. By the 1950s, the Chicago outfit came under renewed scrutiny with the advent of congressional investigations led by Senator Estes Kefauer. The televised hearings exposed the inner workings of organized crime to the American public, painting a damning portrait of corruption, bloodshed, and violence. While the hearings failed to bring about any immediate change, they increased public awareness of organized crime and paved the way for future law enforcement efforts. Throughout the latter half of the 20th century, the Chicago outfit faced internal strife and power struggles as various factions vied for control. Rivalries between different factions within the Chicago outfit often erupted into violence, resulting in numerous murders and destabilizing the entire organization. Despite these challenges, though, the outfit remained a formidable force in Chicago's criminal underworld, adapting to changing circumstances and main maintaining its influence. The legacy of the Chicago outfit is deeply ingrained in the fabric of Chicago's history and culture. From the speakeasies of prohibition to the glittering casinos of Las Vegas, the outfit's influence has left an indelible mark on American society. While its methods may have been ruthless and its actions reprehensible, there's absolutely no denying the impact that the Chicago outfit has had on the course of history. So if we're going to talk about the mob history of Chicago, we couldn't do it without stopping by the home right behind us. The brick home that you see right behind me was once owned and lived in by a man named Sam Giancana. So Sam was the most powerful man in the entire Chicago area when you talk about the mafia. He started off his mob career working for Al Capone. He, he carried out a number of hits. He ordered hits. He was Al Capone's driver, involved heavily in the syndicate. And in the 50s, he actually rose up through the ranks and became the leader. Now, Sam has been connected to hundreds of different murders over the years, but he was never never actually convicted of any of them. It's actually a fact that before he was 20 years old, he was already suspected of three murders, which is hmm. a pretty impressive speed run through crime. <clears throat> but Sam 
would get mixed up in a lot of different stuff. It's pretty interesting if you take a look at his whole life story. In the 1970s, after being involved with the crime for years, taking a step away from crime, something interesting about this is that the CIA actually got involved with Sam and Sam Giancano was involved in a CIA plot to murder Fidel Castro. Now, the CIA had actually asked Sam, allegedly, mm. to murder Fidel Castro, which I think is crazy. All of this came to a head Wild, in the yeah. 70s. Sam was going to testify in front of Congress. He had been called on to give testimony on things he had seen, uh, especially dealing with the CIA. And his powerful friends figured they couldn't let him do that. So right here in this home that Sam lived in, he was cooking sausage late one night at about 10.40 in the evening when somebody came into his house with a silenced weapon and shot him six times to death in his mm. basement. Various authorities, federal and local, today were investigating the murder of Sam Giancana, an alleged mafia type with long connections with the underworld. He was shot to death last night in the basement of his Oak Park, Illinois home. Shot six times with a 22 caliber weapon which may have had a silencer. Giancana had been connected to reported CIA plots to kill Fidel Castro, but there's no indication that his death had anything to do with that. Yet, the method of the crime and the small caliber bullets used don't fit the usual gangland pattern. So there are questions. Here's more from Mike hmm. Jackson in Oak Park. Sam Giancana was a grade school dropout who became Chicago's number one underworld figure, working his way to the top with a reputation as a hitman. His business, he once told his draft board, was stealing. Later, he said the syndicate never did anything more illegitimate than most businessmen do. Giancana enjoyed the good life. Some of his best friends were in show business, and he kept the company of singer Phyllis McGuire. He spent a year in jail in the mid-60s for refusing to answer questions before a federal grand jury. Later, he slipped away to Mexico, where he invested in gambling operations. Giancana returned to the United States almost a year ago. He came back to live quietly in his home in Oak Park, a suburb west of Chicago. He died violently in the basement, dressed in sport clothes, cooking sausage and spinach. We pretty much assumed that it wasn't a, a traditional uh, gangland hit for something he was doing because since he's been back in the United States uh, since July of 1974, he's kept a very low profile. He's almost, in effect, been a tourist here. In the last year, Peter Vira arranged for Giancana to testify before a grand jury in Chicago investigating syndicate crime. Uh, it looks like it, it was something personal, something he had done to someone that uh, they were going to retaliate for him. We have no indication it was for any uh, thing that he had done that would, would hurt the, the criminal syndicate. The head of the FBI's organized crime squad in Chicago says Giancana was killed because he had fallen from favor with his one-time associates. Not yet established is whether Giancana played a role in a reported Central Intelligence Agency plot in 1961 to assassinate Fidel Castro. Mike Jackson, NBC News, Chicago. Now the murder to this day is still unsolved. Nobody knows who carried out this killing. There's tons of theories on who may have murdered Sam, why they would have wanted to murder Sam, but... Yeah. Yeah. It's still unsolved, and it's really interesting. I mean, if walls could talk, this place would tell a pretty, pretty crazy story. Even That's thinking about just things, like yeah. past the murder that happened here, just the conversations that have been had inside of the walls of this house right here. You can only imagine, I mean, what went on in there, things that were planned out. I mean, there's so much stuff. I always wonder, did the people who purchased this house know about the history before they bought it? Do they report paranormal activity? I'd be curious to ask. It's very interesting. Sam Giancana. We're on the trail of mobs and murder here in Chicago, and literally the story wouldn't be complete without the story of what happened in this very house right behind me. So I had actually never even heard of this until we got here this week, but this is the former home of a guy that was associated with the Chicago mob outfit, Sam DeStefano, or Mad Sam. Mad Sam was actually nicknamed by the FBI as being the most vicious torture murderer in the history of the United States. Mm. Now, That's Mad Sam, who lived right here, he worked really closely with the Chicago outfit, Al Capone's branch of Chicago mob, but he was actually never a made man, which means they never accepted him into the mafia. That's because he was so brutal, so unhinged, they knew they could use him to get information and frighten their enemies, but they looked at him as kind of a liability. So, mm. Mad Sam was crazy. He was actually so brutally violent that 
People in the mob thought he was a devil worshiper, and later on, people would testify and say that they found satanic altars, skulls, ritualistic things in the basement of Sam's house, like he was actually worshiping the devil. Sam hmm. liked to torture people, like I said before, so he was a loan shark. And it was reported that Sam would actually loan money to people that he knew wouldn't be able to pay him back, just so he would be able to torture Come them. Beat them, yeah. That's why in this house right behind me, where Sam lived, he actually constructed a soundproof torture chamber. So, Sam murdered a number of people inside of this house, and he liked to use ice picks and drills. He would stab people Yeesh. multiple times in the back, the groin, the legs with this ice pick, mm. in the ears, sometimes causing them to bleed out, other times allowing them to suffer for extended periods of time. He would also drill holes in people's skull with drills. Yes. I mean, he was absolutely brutal. It's Nasty. also known that Sam actually carried out a hit on his own blood brother. He was ordered to murder his brother. He said, okay. He picked his brother up from a casino and shot him five times in the head before dumping his body. One of the more infamous things that happened was Sam. There was a loan shark who worked for the outfit who fled Chicago with $25,000 he had extorted from somebody. Sam and his enforcers went to Wisconsin, tracked that guy down, and mm. chained him to a radiator in the back of a restaurant for three days, completely naked. He was covered in severe burns. And on the third day of this torture, after Sam had been beating him, stabbing him, burning him, Sam invited the man's entire family to a nice banquet dinner. The family actually showed up, Sam served them really nice food, but at the very end of the dinner, Sam brought out their burned family member who was covered in third degree burns, and he then at gunpoint ordered all of the man's members of his own family to urinate on him, which is insane, and that actually happened. They, they actually urinated on their loved one. Also, when the FBI would come interrogate Sam and his wife here at their home, they would serve the FBI agents coffee. Later on, the FBI agents found out that Sam had been peeing in the coffee pot before serving it to them. And I mean, this dude was, was just wacko. He was so, like I said, so crazy and unhinged. The FBI considered him to be the worst torture murderer in America, and the Chicago outfit wouldn't even bring him into the organization because he was so crazy. So on April 14th, 1973, Sam was on trial with his brother and two other members of the Chicago outfit for a murder that they all took part in. Sam showed up to the courtroom though, acting absolutely crazy. He was pushed into the courtroom on a stretcher. He only spoke to the judge through a bullhorn. He was wearing pajamas. And the members of the Chicago outfit, the mob, knew that Sam was gonna be a liability and they'd probably all go down for this murder if he was allowed to testify. So these members, his own friends, told Sam they had some information about something they needed to come tell him. They met him in his garage right there, and that's where they blew him away with mm -hmm. a shotgun. His body was completely ripped mm. apart. It was shotgun. a really bloody, yeah. gruesome scene. He was murdered by the people that he worked for for so long. But His arm was shot off. Oh, yeah, his arm was completely gone. It was blown off by that gunfire. And uh, it's so interesting. I mean, seriously, this is a really unassuming neighborhood, mm. like super just like normal. Unassuming house. Unassuming house, yeah. And then you think there's an actual soundproof torture chamber where even the FBI said they have no idea how many people this guy actually killed. And he was worshiping the devil in there and he was murdered in there. And there's a person that he killed in his basement here that after he was done killing him, he actually got his body and dumped him in a storm drain about three blocks away from here. And it wasn't until the storm drain clogged and they went to clear it out where they found the frozen body of the person he had killed. That's Jeez. I mean, that's wild. <laughs> Throw him in the that's, sewer. Seriously. Yeah, it's pretty ass. Uh... Touch me, but don't touch my brother. I don't like it when you touch my brother. Don't look cross-eyed at my brother. Then I became what they call a raving man -ian. Do I make myself clear? Abuse me, do what you want, slap me in the face, and I won't say nothing. But don't you pick on my family. I think this place has a totally interesting recipe for a haunting. Not only do you have victims that were brutally tortured and murdered inside of the home, but you also have the ghost of the torturer who was worshiping the devil and murdering people. I mean, this guy was a serial killer. There's no other way to cut it. But it's just another footnote in the history of the Chicago mob. Tons of stories like this here. Tons. You can spend weeks going to all these places. I'd love to ask the people who live here if they ever, if they ever experience knew. anything weird. I mean, or if they ever know that's things the garage not, he yeah. was killed in. Obviously, they use their basement here, and so many people were tortured and killed in there. I mean, who knows what happens in this house? You'd imagine they'd have to have something. 
one hundred percent. Because that dude was. Evil. That's a lot of negative energy left up in there. Expect. No, no. Seems like a really nice little house. I guess that's what you want. Yeah, right. When you're torturing people. Yeah, you don't really want to put like torture chamber right in here. <laughs> it's on top of the house. I guess that's true. FBI search right here. I think it's crazy though that he even like murdered his own brother. They said he his mouth would foam too of the thought about wanting to torture someone. Yeah. Like rabid. <laughs> that's crazy. Like he was a rabid person, like loved, like the only reason he got into loan sharking and mafia work was so he had the opportunity to kill people and not only kill torture brutal yeah i mean the mafia was even saying that the only reason that they let him work with them was because of the amount of money that he was bringing in because people knew his reputation well i would definitely not be missing a payment from old not man a sam bit. <laughs> not a bit. you even told me that uh he used to give out people watches so the fbi would get thrown off they'd come ask him like hey did you kill this person and he'd be like no why would i do that I was a good friend of mine look i gave him a watch his name would be engraved on the yeah. watch I'm like that's just crazy that's some mind game shit. <laughs> i mean he was good at what he did for a while 100 percent. never officially <laughs> convicted Yikes. So in investigating the city of Chicago for gangster ghosts, there was one place that we knew we had to check out. And that would be the Congress Plaza Hotel hmm. right in downtown Chicago. The Congress Plaza Hotel holds a significant place in the annals of American history. Beyond its architectural grandeur and cultural significance, the hotel has also been linked to the infamous Chicago outfit, particularly during the reign of Mr. Al Capone. To understand the connection between Capone and the Congress Plaza Hotel, it's essential to examine the context of Capone's ascent to power and the establishment of the Chicago outfit. So, like we covered before, after the demise of Big Jim Colosimo in 1920, Al Capone emerged as the undisputed leader of the Chicago outfit, leveraging his ruthlessness and strategic brilliance to dominate Chicago's criminal underground. Under his reign, the Chicago outfit expanded its influence into various illicit activities like bootlegging, gambling, and extortion. But now let's talk about the hotel. Opened in 1893 as a part of the world's Columbian Exposition, the Congress Plaza Hotel quickly became a symbol of luxury and sophistication in Chicago. Its prime location overlooking Grant Park in Lake Michigan made it a favored destination for politicians, celebrities, and affluent travelers. Over the years, the hotel hosted numerous prestigious events, including presidential inaugurations, international conferences, presidential news conferences, and lavish galas, cementing its reputation as one of Chicago's premier hotels. But now back to Capone. As Al Capone's power grew, so too did his influence over Chicago's hospitality industry. Hotels, restaurants, and nightclubs became key fronts for the outfit's operations, serving as venues for illegal gambling, alcohol distribution, and other more disturbing activities. Al Capone and his associates wielded significant influence over hotel owners and managers, using intimidation and bribery to ensure their compliance with outfit demands. The Congress Plaza Hotel, with its extremely opulent setting and central location, allegedly proved to be an ideal setting for such endeavors. Now, concrete evidence linking Al Capone directly to the Congress Plaza Hotel is sparse, but historical accounts, testimony, and anecdotal evidence suggest a very close relationship between the outfit and the hotel. You see, the hotel's proximity to Al Capone's headquarters at the Lexington Hotel and its reputation as a gathering place for Chicago's elite made it a natural target for outfit operations. Rumors mm. of backroom deals, clandestine meetings, illegal gambling, murders in kill rooms, and other illicit activities abound, fueling speculation about the hotel's role in Capone's criminal empire. Now, during Prohibition, the Congress Plaza Hotel, like many establishments in Chicago, became a hotspot for bootlegging and illegal alcohol consumption. Al Capone's control over the city's liquor trade enabled him to supply alcohol to hotels, restaurants, and speakeasies throughout Chicago, including the Congress Plaza Hotel. The hotel's lavish ballrooms and private suites provided the perfect setting for extravagant, illegal parties and clandestine gatherings, attracting both high-profile clientele and underworld figures alike. The ties between the outfit and the hotel extend beyond illicit activities to include corruption of law enforcement and political figures. Al Capone and his associates allegedly maintained mm. relationships with Congress Plaza hotel staff and management in order to ensure that outfit operations remained undetected and unimpeded. Bribery, extortion, and coercion were common tactics used to silence potential informants and thwart law enforcement efforts to crack down on organized crime. However, following Al Capone's imprisonment for tax evasion in 1931, the heyday of the Chicago outfit began to wane, and with it, the influence of organized crime over the city's hospitality industry. 
The Congress Plaza Hotel, however, endured, retaining its status as a symbol of Chicago's rich history and architectural heritage. While rumors of its connection to Capone and the outfit persist to this day, the hotel continues to attract visitors from around the world, offering a glimpse into Chicago's storied past. But we can't talk about the Congress Plaza Hotel without talking about the dark side of the building. And when I tell you there have been a lot of deaths inside of this hotel, you're not ready for what we're about to talk about. In oh, 1900, Captain Lewis Ostheim was staying at the hotel the night before his wedding. Lewis had served in the 1st United States Artillery during the Spanish-American War, and as a veteran, sadly, he suffered from PTSD. This mm. came in the form of night terrors and other terrible symptoms. On the night of his death, while staying at the hotel, Lewis awoke from a particularly brutal PTSD episode, and in his daze reached for his gun. Putting the barrel to his head, he pulled the trigger. When Dang. management found him dead in his room later on, they found two wedding rings sitting by his side. Ever since, Captain Lou's spirit has been seen in many areas of the hotel, appearing as a shadowy figure that glides through the halls following guests and staff. People speculate that Captain Lou may still be searching for the woman who he'd planned to marry using those two wedding rings. In 1939, a 43-year-old Jewish woman named Adal Langer came to the hotel with her two sons, 6-year-old Carl and 4-year-old Jan. They'd come to America fleeing Nazi-occupied Czechoslovakia and traveled to Chicago to be near a couple of Langer's aunts. Adele and her sons were waiting for Carl Jr., the boy's father, to join them, but after a few days, he still hadn't shown up. Days turned to weeks, and as Adele Langer waited for her husband to show up, she became more and more distraught. She also hadn't been able to find any work and was struggling to make ends meet. All of that, plus the stress of having to leave her home country so suddenly, eventually just overwhelmed Adele and drove her insane. One day, after taking the boys to the Lincoln Park Zoo, Adele opened the window of their room on the top floor of the hotel with a mission. First, she picked up six-year-old Carl and threw him out the window, where he fell 12 stories to his death. She then did the same with four-year-old Jan. Then afterwards, she leaped to her own death immediately after. Now, interestingly, even though all three victims' bodies were found on the sidewalk outside of the hotel, six-year-old Carl's body somehow never made it to the city morgue. It seems like it just disappeared. Uh, and all this leads to the story ooh. of the little boy ghost, who's seen in worn out mm. clothes running around the hallways of the 12th floor, the top floor, the floor where we stayed. In fact, this young boy specter is one of the most famous spirits in the Congress Plaza Hotel. And now quickly, let's touch on a few of the other deaths. 1904, an elevator operator fell 70 feet to the bottom of the elevator shaft, dying immediately and brutally on impact. Ugh. Four years later, a near-broke spendthrift named Roy Gormley shot himself in his room after paying the orchestra in the hotel $500 to play George Handel's Dead March and buying drinks for all the musicians. In 1910, a man named James Kennedy checked in, went to his room, cut all the identification tags out of his clothes, burned all of his papers, and then shot himself. Six years later, a mining investor named Morse Davis and his wife formed a pact to take their own lives in room 312. They both ingested two cyanide capsules, though Mrs. Davis ultimately survived and wound up committed to a psychiatric hospital. In the year 1920 in the hotel, a man mm. died of alcohol poisoning from poorly made illegal moonshine. Oops. Six years after that, a woman named Harriet Harrison fell to her death down another empty elevator shaft, this time from six stories up. Yeah. In the year 1928, Sloganeer G. Herb Palin, who coined the phrase safety first, died of a sudden heart attack in his room. Then, about 20 years later, a longtime resident of the hotel who had a wooden right leg was having breakfast in the hotel's restaurant when he also suffered a heart attack and died. To this day, people see a peg-legged ghost walking throughout the hotel. They think it's this man who they've nicknamed Peg Leg Johnny. In 1950, a man named John Raymond was in his room when he was approached by the hotel's credit manager, who approached him about a $104 debt. When the credit manager opened John's door, John shot him and killed him before turning the gun on himself and taking his own life as well in a murder Around 16 years mm. later, an attorney named Frederick Hay was found dead in his room in the hotel. He was butt naked, bound hand and foot with his own socks, and had been strangled to death with his own shirt. Sometime in the 1970s, a woman also slit her wrists in one of the hotel bathtubs. And at one point in the hotel's history, a taxi driver made a fatal leap out of an upper floor window. A salesman deliberately threw himself down an empty elevator shaft, and a troubled family man hung himself from a cupboard hook in his room. Now, after hearing all of that, it's no wonder that the hotel is haunted, right? Well, I think it's about time that we head to our rooms, and what you're about to see 
is truly going to blow your mind. All is right. Thrill me. Okay, so guys, real quickly, we just checked in here at the Congress Plaza Hotel. This is the most haunted hotel in Chicago. Like we've already said, I just we just got our rooms. Bro, check out what, I just opened my door and look at, I f ran down the hall because of this. Check this creepy ass shit out. What? Dude, when it, isn't that f***ing weird? Is the single drawer open? The like, dude, hell? What the hell is that? <laughs> I know it's so simple, but I'm, I don't think I've ever... Um, yeah, I've never. I have never. That is odd already. Freaky, dude. This room is f***ing creepy. Yeah, these curtains, too? Oh, you got the little tiny windows. Damn, that's kind of nice, though. To be able to open these up way more. Isn't this, isn't that f***ing scary, though? Yeah. Like, dude, I think it's freaky that the manager of this place doesn't come up to this floor. So, to put this into perspective it's tonight, very weird. we wanted to come here as a part of the Mafia ghost hunt. But when we got here and checked in just now, I asked the manager to put us in haunted rooms. She said the whole 12th floor is haunted because of the fact that a family took their lives by jumping from this floor from a window. But he, just looking in the hallways, it's already creepy. The manager told me downstairs she hasn't been up here in two years. She makes <laughs> other employees come up because of an experience she had that she didn't even want to talk about. So she doesn't come up here. And in addition, we're the only people on the floor. The people who booked Only it ones on the floor. told me that, nice. yeah, I said, are we, is there anyone else on the floor? Nope, you should be alone right now. There's no one up there. Check this out. Well, if you look from my room's window, there's no lights on on any room on this whole floor. Really? So they really, like, don't sell rooms on this floor. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. All the way around. Let me turn off your light so I can see it. Bro, that's so trippy. Look at that, bro. Holy all shit. All of the windows yeah, on all this of the floor the entire are pitch floor. black, bro. They literally do not sell rooms on this floor. What the f- Dude, Dang. that's so creepy. Dude, like, what? Bro, wait. That's the f***ing hallway over there, bro. That's not even the rooms. You sure? Yeah, because look at all these are. Let's go walk down there. Dude, what the f is down there? Pitch blackness? <laughs> yeah, here, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna put my bags in my room just to be safe. You wanna check out the other room? Mm -hmm. Here you go. So, our room right there is 1214, and my room is 1202. This is 1210. We haven't been in here. What the f bro? I have full body chills right now, bro. What the actual f Connor? Yo, I okay, you guys can't really see this, bro. We have not been in this fucking room yet. Do you see that, bro? Actually, though, my I have goosebumps like all my hairs on it. The chairs have randomly flipped. Like everything else is in place, so everything this chair, else looks fine. We just walked in here. In my this room, the drawer was open. Over. Already that freaked me out. And now this chair is tipped over? Like, what the f***, dude? How does that f***ing happen? I don't know, these are f***ing big chairs, too. Right by the window, too. God damn, that's so eerie. It's still so weird that This hotel is those creepy. Not. Yeah. I think immediately this might take the cake for creepiest hotel I've like ever stayed in. <clears throat> Let's go walk down that hall real quick. Anything weird in the bathroom? Fucking corkscrew on the door? 
from the bottle opener? Kind of cool. This is a very strange build. I mean, all of our rooms are completely different. Honestly. So what's the third room? They have three rooms for some reason. Are they having Dude, others? Like, look at this shit. Ooh, How fucking weird what is this the room? Hell? Hotel rooms just padlocked shut in this hallway. What? And the stairs are too. What's this? Oh, pipes. Okay, that makes a little sense. Dude, I mean, it's so weird, bro. Like, look at this shit. It's still an odd design. When have you ever seen doors in a hotel that don't have numbers? Like, they're actual hotel rooms. And they, this one has a number. And this one doesn't. And what the hell is this? Look at this, bro. That's missing. Seriously, there's a really weird. 1244, 1240. There's 1242. And look at this brand new door. This is my room. Alright, well. Okay, guys, I'm just making a mental note of this. This is actually insane. So I've just been sitting here waiting for Connor so that we can investigate these rooms. I shit you not, guys. I know people are going to say I'm fucking making this up. I just noticed that the drawer is back open. Well. It was uh, just shut. bro oh my fucking god dude that's weird oh my god you guys just saw that you guys just saw that i have to assume there's something oh, weird Jesus. inside of it like a mechanism's Hello? busted or something and it keeps letting it slide out but that's still freaky you guys just saw that entire thing on camera holy f that is absolutely mental that that just happened on camera, bro. What the hell? I've only been sitting here for like 15 minutes, guys. Even then it shouldn't take that this long if it's going to just slide floor. out. Can you shut that drawer again? Okay, look, we're going to test it out one more time. Yeah, give that another go. Okay, please keep it shut. Dude, nothing. That is so freaky. Okay, I'm gonna sit down. We're just taking a 10 minute break before we start investigating. I'll let you know if this thing opens up again. Yo, guys, guys. Guys! Oh. Holy oh. shit! Oh. oh my god. What the hell? Can you open that up all the way? Shut it again? What? Look, I'm... <coughs> backed Excuse up, me, what? Backed up in the corner, pushed up here because I'm so freak. I just heard oh. a noise and looked up at the drawer. <laughs> the top drawer is open now. I'm not... Dude, what the... F Bro, I have such chills. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. The the middle one was the one that opened before, and it's the I, top I, I, one. And I the middle one is still again. shut on yep. camera, dude. Oh my god, I have such I have mm -hmm. such goosebumps, dude. Like I said, we haven't even started filming. What it's only been about six, hell? seven minutes since I filmed that last clip where that drawer opened. And this is the top drawer. It switched drawers even now. There's there's this no reasoning. Actually, 
insane. Can you shut that drawer or open it further? I just heard two taps in there. Thank you for doing that. Look, on camera. I'm gonna shut this. I'm gonna call Connor now and get him to start investigating in here with me get, because this get, is get, taking get off Get investigations in there. You might want it the other room. <laughs> oh, 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 there you go. Okay, Connor, I just got this stuff set up, y'all. Thank you. <sighs> Connor's about to come over here. Um, what the hell? What the f Oh, what? Yo, know, first of all, that and my door, which I've been sitting in here for like an hour and a half, the door. Okay, now seriously, y'all, tell me, am what I crazy? The hell? I feel like that chain shouldn't have been swinging. Uh, that shouldn't be. Like, uh, be honest with me, I don't, I'm not trying to make anything paranormal, but Unless I really feel like Unless you've had like a freaking hurricane come blowing still. through. Right? I haven't been in or out of this room for about an hour, hour and 30 minutes. That should not be swimming. That should have stopped by now. Matter of fact, it should stop by now already and from the fact that just catching it. I didn't even notice. God, that's so weird. Oh, oh, okay, that one. None of these, none of these, that one. Are you over there by the window? Dude, that's especially crazy considering that this is the floor where the mother threw her two children out of the window to their deaths and then jumped herself. I'm sorry, does having that by the window bring back bad memories? Or having the windows open, does that bring back bad memories to you? Oh, oh what the f***? What the f***? Bro! Just... Mm. I had to say we might be doing stopping at an hour and a half just so we can have time to rest for tomorrow, but holy cow. Thank you for that. Dude, this place is haunted. Not even kidding. Haven't even started investigating. It haunted. This place is crazy haunted. This, this is no questions. <laughs> okay, I'm going to text Connor get him to come over so we can actually start. I mean, you can see all of this I've got set up. I've just been waiting for him to come over. That shit's crazy, dude. Okay, I just set my camera down. Both of those just went off over there. Hey, yo. Fifty years ago, it says on here. Are you over there by the bed? Oh! 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 Oh my god! Oh, I'm trying not to scream. Oh my god, bro. Oh! Okay, I'm gonna try not to scream because I'm in the hotel. I don't know if there might be someone on this floor or not, but... Yo, what the hell, guys? No, well, there's someone else on the floor, but there might be someone below you. What the hell? Hi? Bro, what? Dude, right when I step closer to it, it starts going off. Do you not want me to come closer to you? What the hell? Dude, that is insane. I've never seen something like that. It's literally when I step closer, it's like it's telling me to step away. Look, I'll show you in the mirror. Look. Okay, I'm backing up. There's something on you, dude? Dude, can you possibly... Provide me with an answer for that, because that's some really crazy shit, actually. Look. And from that distance, it shouldn't even be touching it. It's not even consistently going. What the 
hell is going on in this room? Guys, this is incredibly bizarre already. By the way, I changed shirts. I have my pink turtleneck on. Now I've got a torture museum shirt on. We just went to the Chicago Torture Museum this evening. Now I'm actually going to get Connor in here. I literally was just about to text him and all that stuff started going off. I can't even put my camera down for a second in here. Oh yeah, Lord. I'm gonna put my camera down and keep cut recording. Dude, just just get the dude, get the dang okay. camera on the tripod. And just keep watching as you text Connor. Like seriously, the, the, the longer you take to do this, the faster it is. It's done, and you can keep recording. Oh 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 oh! Dude, there you go again. There you go again. Oh, him right behind me, bro. Connor knocking on the door. Look, guys, it stopped. Yeah. You just nudged it slightly. You're screaming in Bro. the hallway. What's going on? Bro. So many spikes just now. And look at this, bro. Oh, what? 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 Bro, it stopped. That's crazy! What the hell? He's not gonna believe that when he sees that footage, huh? I was standing right here, and I was like, can I come closer? And I would walk closer, and it would start spiking like crazy, and I'd step back. And then I kind of made my way around here, and then I got up close to it and it stopped. And then I got back and started doing it again. Now it's completely stopped. Okay, just making another clip. Wayne Connor's changing rooms right now. His room's too hot for him. This device just said, I'll open it. And it's right above the drawers. So now I'm wondering if they're gonna open it. <laughs> okay, one more clip. This same device said, unwanted child, I am annoyed. Now, That's this cool. isn't exactly gangster related, but mm -hmm. if you'll remember the whole haunting story of this floor is that that mother threw her two children that she didn't want anymore out of the window on this floor and then jumped to her death. So maybe that's her talking about her child. Maybe that's the kid she's saying he feels unwanted. Be baddie by the time she passed. I don't know. Yes, sadly. Oh, 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 bro. Oh. Well Yo, then, what the lock them back. Dude, that doesn't happen in like an hour, bro. Hello? Is that you? You said you'd open it. Thank you. Hi. Oh. Hi again. <laughs> oh god. Bro, what the fuck? My room's even f worse. I'm going down the switch again. He's gonna put me down a couple floors. God. Well, servant's room. Connor's having really bad luck in this hotel. He's been in two different rooms and they've both been swelteringly hot. And what's interesting about this place, first of all, I wanna go back and rewind that took me off track. That is crazy. That drawer that's opened, what, four times on camera, three times on camera? Three I don't now. know exactly how many. Very, very strange. But I don't know, Connor's just having bad luck. He can't seem to find a room that actually will fit him. It's too hot, it's really uncomfortable. I don't know, there's some weird energy affecting him here. And this place is definitely genuinely creepy. I can't believe I'm sleeping in here, okay? So I'm sorry I keep filming all these little clips. Connor's just taking forever. Okay, that just started spiking. And look at what this device said. I dropped it. Do you think that's talking about the child? Like, I dropped it, I dropped the kid. I don't know, but it's freaky. This is all just freaking me out. Okay, guys, so we're upstairs. We're upstairs right now mm -hmm. in the Connors Plaza settled. Hotel. This hotel has a crazy interesting history. This building was the hangout of Al Capone, so he ran a lot of the mob and conducted mafia business here inside of this building in tons of different rooms. He was a known figure that frequented this hotel. Um, there are rumors that he may have had people killed in here. There are rumors there may have been a kill room inside of this hotel that they don't know where it was or how many people were killed. 
but I was reading an article just now and one of the former managers, people associated with the hotel, stated that there were so many people that took their life inside of this hotel over the years that they literally couldn't keep track of all of them and couldn't keep count of them. There's lots of death in this hotel. And in fact, this hotel has been ranked by a bunch of different magazines and news sources, online journals and websites as being mm -hmm. not one of the most, but the most. most haunted building in all of Illinois, the Congress Plaza Hotel. Just go look it up. Um, Interesting. So yeah, we're gonna try and talk to Al Capone. It's time to talk. Yeah, on this floor is where the mom threw her two kids to their deaths then jumped out the window. And also the last piece of extremely macabre history is that H.H. H. Holmes, one of the first serial killers in American history, the guy who terrorized the people of Chicago and built a murder castle here in town, he used to prowl and hunt for victims in the lobby of this hotel. So, one of America's first and most really disturbed serial killers who built a murder castle was hunting people in the lobby here, so... What's a murder castle? A lot of strange castle? history, but we've picked up a lot of activity already. Let's just ask some questions. I'm sorry, I'm, I've got so many questions now. All right. First to of all, introduce what the ourselves. Hell is a murder castle. Grace. To introduce ourselves right now, my name's Colin. My name's Connor. We want to speak to Al Capone or any of the mobsters associated with the Chicago outfit. Hey, yo. That's a hard grab. All right, so it seems like you might be a mobster. Star. Star. Can you ring this bell if you were a member of the Chicago outfit? Woman. Woman, Woman and Evelyn. There's a certain noise out in the hall. Living. Is there a woman here? Hey, yo. Serious. Serious. So, I'm just gonna ask. The Graves. The Graves. Is this the woman who threw her children from the window? Olympics Stadium? Ryan. Lots of sports stuff all of a sudden out of this stuff too. Weird. Is this the woman who generation? Chief. You're the woman who threw her children. We are here. Who's here? <gasps> By the window? <laughs> this place is active as hell. That's crazy how that one went off and then all of them went off. Sure, you don't want to. I don't Between. know. Go spooning with Colin and uh, with Connor and uh, <gasps> in his new better room. Dude, this bell's Just going saying. crazy. Actually, it's set on a very low sensitivity. Quiet. What's that say? Quiet and clearing up. Okay, I feel genuine. Don't leave us. Dude, quiet, leave us. I can't leave you, unfortunately, because I'm staying in this, ro this room tonight. Remy? Do you regret throwing your children out of one I of these- I have an injury. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's putting it lightly. Hague? Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Healing. I had an injury healing. Patrick. So 
So if this is the woman who threw her kids off the building, can you tell us? Smith. Can you tell us why you did it? I want to talk to one of the gangsters, the Chicago outfit. Hello, people. new friends. <laughs> this place is home. Hello, new friends. This place is home. Is this one of the children? Carl? Playground. Playground? Is this hotel your playground, Carl? Remember, this is the floor that they say that they see a little boy on. That, well, this is where the well, kids are Well, there's Thank my goosebumps loot yeah. again. Conclusion. What's the last thing you remember, buddy? Is this place like a big playground for you, Carl? Seething. Seething. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mac MacDougal. Table. Carl, is your brother with you? Use camera. We are using our camera. Spur. Whoever's here, can you go ask one of the... the men to come speak with us? people in Chicago. Mafia. Carl? Are you still here with us, buddy? I think I answers that. Sacred. Carl. The children are listening. <laughs> It's an adult that's with the children. So if you're talking about the children, who's this? Is this Adele? Carl's mom? February, bro. What? It straight up says February. Agitated. And it's February right now. Huh. What month it happened? August. Hmm. You know what happened with Al Capone in February, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre? If there's a gangster, a mobster, someone with a Chicago outfit here, do you remember the Valentine's Day shooting? Interesting. Do you know who committed the Valentine's Day shooting? We are following you. Help us. We're following you, help us? What do you mean? Where do you want us to lead you? Is there someone we somewhere we can lead you that would help you? Well, where is it? Can you tell us the place you want to follow us to? Who will? Carl, are you warning us about the men that haunt this hotel? Mm -hmm. Her Heroin. Heroin. The Wasn't mafia. The mafia dealing heroin? Back then? Cod. Cod. Cod of the heroin. Cod the heroin. What? Is this where they used to cut heroin? Whoever I'm talking to at this point, you probably don't know what that is, Carl. Okay, buddy, by the way, I set this little device up right here. Yeah, yes to the bell. But this little thing right here. Yeah, you're tapping it. You can answer our questions by hitting yes or no. My name is Alice. 
we want to figure out who here from the mob remembers Al Capone. Go ask Alice. If you're from the Chicago outfit and you remember Scarface, Al Capone. Gaining more energy. Good. So where did the mob members hang out in this building? Oldest son. Over there on the side again. No. Do you not want to talk to us because we're asking questions about the mob? If we go to another room away from the kids, will you tell us some of the mafia secrets? No one can hurt you anymore. You're already passed. So we should go to the other room that we rented on here and the kids should stay? And you'll talk to us? Slough. Slough. Like slough them off. Mafia guy, we're gonna move over to room 1212. Yes. We're gonna move over to room 1210. Why don't you follow us over there? Let's go. Oh. Okay guys, so ah. right now we're in another room here on the 12th floor of the hotel, the most haunted floor. So we're actually staying here on the 12th floor for two nights. Tomorrow we're going to be investigating a mafia body dumping site and the site of the Valentine's Day Massacre. So because this was the place where Capone ran his outfit from, one of the places at least, we want to try Ask some questions about the business your, uh, that was going on in the there, hotel Chicago, eh? and ask about the Valentine's Day Massacre. So whoever told us that they wanted to speak somewhere else, not in that room, we're here in this room right now. So just try to be as truthful as you can because no one can hurt you anymore, okay? Let's do this. All right, to any mafia members... That we're talking to. My name's Connor. This is Colin sitting right in front of me. We want to know. There's two of us. The man he wandered. What's your name? Beware. Beware. That's secret. You can't tell me what your name is? People try to scream and get away. So, mafia meetings were held here. What kind of stuff would y'all talk about? So much happened. So it said to beware of the one who wanders. Metal. Who's the one who wanders? Jacket. Metal jacket? Like a bullet? The leg. The peg leg? That's what we need to watch out for? Keep some quiet. He's peg I never boy. liked uh, boss. I never liked boss. Who's the boss? <laughs> you, not me. <laughs> he ran things. So you just did stuff for him? From the office. Mm -hmm. He was a Yankee. That's, mm, interesting. Can you tell me, Grace? are you a part of the Chicago I have to say this some interesting outfit? reaction. It's really fast. Card. Bone shark. Lone shark. Yeah, there was a lot of loan sharks. Invoice and collection. You did collections? Would you go mess people <laughs> up if they didn't pay? People had differences. There's a lot of violence. You get knocked. So you killed people? Whole families. You did that if they didn't pay back the loan? Mm-hmm. And worse things, uh, spent shoes. Got a lot of voices, actually. How many people are here? We're right here. 
in the in the car. How many people? Get out of here. I just swear to God, I just heard uh, Capone. You don't like He walks that? around. You don't like that we're here? Shot me. Capone shot you? His whores struck him. What can you tell me about You think Capone? you can cheat me? What can you tell me about Capone? Gotta test your blood. Test my blood? Mm. What's that mean? You get jumped. Can we? No, I don't want to get jumped. What happened to you? Baseball. What's that mean? Baseball happened to you? <laughs> Ooh. I'm playing games. He's playing a game of baseball? No. Crack me. They crack you with the baseball bat? A couple times, two mm. or three. Literally, just like that. A couple times, two or three. And that's how you died? You gotta get out of here. It's not safe? It takes a bunch to get out. Money. But you got no gas in your car anyway. I swear to God, I just heard that whole thing. But you got no gas in your car anyway. Well, I had a few questions. We're going out to the site of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Do you uh, know uh, anything about that? Bring me some cognac. You like cognac? I guess I could. So on February... Gotta pay. February 14th, 1929, there was a big massacre that happened. Do you know what happened that machine day? Machine gun. Yeah, a lot of people were shot with machine guns. Were you there that day? Sparks flew. Towards. And well, oh well. Sparks flew towards. And oh well, oh well. Got pinched. Your guys got pinched? Got killed? By Jimmy. Never doubt. I appreciate you. Can you tell me who did it? His right man. Was it the Irish or the Italians? All are dead now. Yeah, that was a, a long time ago. That murder's the massacre's still unsolved. What do you think about that? Are you happy? I really can't, but John, these kind of drunks got us in trouble. <laughs> That's crazy. February. Yeah. It was on Valentine's Day. It's almost the hundred year I reunion. I don't play games. So you're a mob member? Dang. Were you with... They all wanted payment. Been coming up with here. Were you with Bugs Marone? It's taking a while. There's some smoke snaps, but wow. Fun. I got I'm the seat. Intently. You got the seat? They mm -hmm. angered us. It was it about the liquor sales? Half hour yet. <clears throat> <laughs> they never found me. Anniversary. Anniversary. No way. Please go back. You want us to go over there? We're going to go over there tomorrow. The Give them a kiss. The place where it all went down. They're all broken. Is there anything you want us to know about that day? You got to be careful. I've said too much. <laughs> Mm. I miss gonna, my wife. You're gonna get in trouble? It's I've decided. I think that's about enough. You're done talking? You said too much already? Oh my god, bro, that was so creepy. He's listening in the hall. Who is it? Who's in the hall? You know. Was it Capone? I'm telling you. 
Boss man. That's free. Always up to something. Mm. Do I need to be afraid? Many lives were lost. Oh my god. Do I need to be afraid here? Oh my god, I heard Valentine's coming up. Thank god you spoke to me. Yeah, I'm, There's I'm, more- oh my god, bro. There's more bodies. I'm really glad we got to talk to you tonight. Is there one last thing you'd like to tell us before we leave? He ran things. Yeah, we know that. Alright, well... We're gonna get going. It's a bad path. We really appreciate you talking Oh my god. Us. It's a bad path. Got me killed. Oh, dude, that gave me the chills. Alright, well then I will not join a gang. Okay. Alright, well I'm gonna take Colin out of this. Is there anything else? One last thing. <coughs> Good luck. Alright, thank you. <laughs> oh my mm. god damn, bro. You're being followed. Well. That's not good. What happened? Well, I started talking about St. Valentine's. Yeah. Actually, oh. right when you said St. Valentine's, here, you can just pause that while you start back. So, I started talking about St. Valentine's, and he started, it's, it was really vague, but it seemed like the guy we were just talking to was there. It's like, my guy's got pinched, or like, he, if he was there, or maybe he just like, was got you filled in about what happened there. My guy's got pinched, wasn't good, it said metal. And you said jacket. Mm. And then it said sparks flew. Um, I was like, well, what can you tell me about that? It's the February 14th, 1929. That's when it happened. It's almost the 100 year anniversary. It says anniversary on that. Oh, 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 oh. many lives were lost too? Yeah. Mm. What the f? It was bro. very, very relevant. And then the guy like was like, "All right, gotta stop talking. I've said too yep, much. Gotta stop. Boss man, said too much. Out, I might be in trouble." Out in the hall. Yeah, I heard in the hall, and I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And I was like, "Is it Al Capone?" And you said, "You know." Oh God. I've been alone for years. <gasps> mm. Dude, spot on. I've like, I haven't really seen people ghost hunt in this hotel, so it's like really crazy that even saying that, I've been alone for years, like wanting right. someone to ask them these questions. What even stays up on this floor. It's f***ing, that's actually crazy. Oh. Are you happy that we came up here to speak with you? That REM pod went off a couple times. Right next to me? Really? Oh! Oh! Oh my f***ing god, bro. I'm trying not to scream because we're in the hotel. <laughs> Yo, what the f***, bro? Holy Yo, is it just smokes. me also, or is it not as hot in here? Oh, I feel like cooler. Yo, that was f***ing wild, bro. All f***ing four. What did I just ask before that Are happened? Are you happy that we talked to you? Oh, oh, shit. Yo, I gotta sleep up here, man. I know. What the f***? Good luck. Uh, that means I'm gonna be the only person on this entire floor sleeping up here tonight because Connor got transferred to the rest. Hey, yo. Oh. That was in the hall. Good luck. Dude. Yeah, Connor's rooms were too hot, so he got moved to the fifth floor. So, like I was saying before, Hello. we're the only ones on this floor tonight. Like the manager told us. So unfortunately, that means I'm the oh. only one that's going to be spending the night on this haunted floor. At least your room's cool. That's f actually. That's actually really not cool. I really <laughs> don't like that at all, bro. Um, Leave this place. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Leave what the this hell, place. man? That's not good, bro. Alright, well. Tomorrow we're going out to St. Valentine's Day Massacre and the cemetery and it'll be a nice little treat. So, let me ask one time before we quit to- I'm innocent. I swear. Yo, bro. <laughs> I was literally about to ask, because it said arrest just there. I was going to say, 
did they get the right guys? Like, are you saying you want us to arrest or figure out who to arrest? I'm innocent. It's like, go get the guys. That's cr- Bro, we're talking about an unsolved oh, murder? I also forgot to say, at the very beginning, it's talking like, like, I'm asking about, like, oh, it's involvement with the uh, uh, baseball. Uh, it's all a game. Like, were you playing baseball? You said no. I was like, and you said, had to whack them or something like that. Like, were you killing people with baseball bats? And you said, I hit them a couple times. <laughs> what? <laughs> And like Bugsy, this guy let's like go to the visit him with a baseball bat. Dude, Dude, that's spooky, bro. Let's yeah. try to get some so, results. Oh, ba- and the loan collections. Man, she... Oh, yeah, I heard loan shark. I thought that had some, That was really crazy to hear that. <laughs> so you're telling me right now, I gotta be alone on this floor with an angry loan shark man who probably killed people, who knows details about a famous mass murder, and you're also telling me the ghost of Al Capone could be in the hallway right now? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, look. Understanding. Like, we right now you're starting to get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, whoever's in here who we've been talking to, tomorrow we are going to come back after we've investigated the Valentine's Day Massacre site. And we're going to ask you a couple more questions. And I would love if you could help us see if what we got is true. But for now... If you don't feel like staying up here, go to the fifth floor, follow him. This is the cool nah. floor. <laughs> Alright. All right. We need to go downstairs. Well, Why would you ever go downstairs? Thanks for talking to us, sir. There's people uh, in the Do you scare real there. easily? Yes. By chance, do you? <laughs> yes. You get freaked out? Yeah, I don't watch scary movies. I can't do haunted houses. <laughs> Just kind of hide out of the blankets when the thunder and lightning yeah. goes? Yeah. Well, then this story is perfect for you. Uh, <laughs> some call this one the most haunted cemetery in all of North America. Others would argue it is the most haunted place in the entire world. We're talking about Bachelors Grove Cemetery out in Midlothian. Yeah, so Where that's exactly why week, I didn't yeah. go. <laughs> and we sent Drake Hamilton instead. Why not? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I found a very hidden place with a very sort of interesting history. Bachelors Grove has had a dark reputation for decades, but it's actually been around for nearly 200 years. I thought I'd look back at just what makes Bachelors Grove so scary. There's something definitely peculiar and not right about this location. This location is Bachelors Grove Cemetery. Tucked away in a forest preserve in Midlothian, this one acre graveyard has been named the most haunted cemetery in North America. It's housed the dearly departed since the mid-1800s. It's said to have received its name following the death of several unmarried immigrants in the area. It is the home to many paranormal sightings. And for Carl Kay, Bachelors Grove expert and founder of the website thepathtobachelorsgrove.com, none are more famous than the iconic photo of the woman sitting on the tombstone which ran in the Chicago Sun-Times. One of the legends here is the Madonna of the Grove going through the cemetery late at night on a full moon, sometimes with, sometimes without a baby in her arms. So is Amelia here looking for her child that's buried here and not with the rest of the family is one of the possibilities. However, beyond the spooky campfire tales is a dark history. 1966, a mushroom hunter finds a dead teenage girl in the woods. 1989, a woman kills her boyfriend. His body was found at the cemetery. 1993, two men were found guilty of severely beating a man. They traveled to the cemetery to attack and rob gay men. This is not a playground for those looking for a quick spook. Carl says it's a place to pay respect. Come here with an open mind. Come here with a loving heart. Come here with respect. Um, I don't expect you to come and experience something immediately. My name is John mm-hmm. Stevenson. We're at Bachelors Grove Cemetery. That it's actually surprised. quite known for uh, mafia activity, not just mm-hmm. ghosts. Uh, Chicago Mafia used to, rumors are, drive down this street right in front here, kill people, throw them right down there. We can walk over to the swamp there, and they used to drop bodies off there. And I was born and raised out here. I heard those stories my entire life. And back in the day, Chicago Mafia was quite active. And this road used to go right through here, through the woods, and you could follow it clear in Chicago. So it was a straight route right out here to drop off the bodies and go away. I heard that most of my life. Again, you know, that's something you can't say for sure, but 
that's that's what we've been but, told. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Look at this place. In the summertime, this is very creepy looking. It's all totally green. I bet. Easy to hide bodies when the water's got a thing of scum on the top. It too. And it's it's not that deep. We're we're trying to hide a body on Ghost Adventures. The producers were out here, part of their thing. They wanted to throw a body in and recreate the Chicago Mafia. They kept trying to throw it in there and they couldn't get it in. And then me and the producer finally threw it, went out there, stuck head, just up, sticking out of the water. <laughs> so, and so it's harder than you think to hide your body in here. <laughs> Why is there a hole in this fence here? This has been here as long as I can remember. It's like so strange. That is weird. Even this time of year, this looks kind of eerie. Supposedly, I haven't seen it, but there's stories of mystery lights and stuff like floating above this water too. So supposedly they used to throw bodies in here. Again, I, I don't know 100%, but I've told that my entire life. You think it's possible that that's true? Oh, I definitely think so. Because the uh, availability of it being out here, like in the middle of the woods. Middle what ideal woods, place to just stop to and Chicago. throw a body out. Has anybody seen any like mobster or yeah, ghosts has out been. here? Well, actually, I showed you those pictures. Those two, sh those, yeah. those aren't actually shadows. What would you call that? That's uh, figures, literally. Yeah, the translucent figures. Yeah. They're wearing suits. Mm -hmm. They're and they look like they remind me of mafia guys. And you saw a guy in a suit out here. Yeah, a guy just a physical. Per well, I think he was physical. He walked out. He was wearing a suit and nice shoes. Walked in the graveyard. Just kind of looked, turned around, and I was actually with my brother that day. And we're both like, "What is he doing out here?" We turned back. It's gone. <laughs> and as you see out there, we just walked that way. You just can't vanish right there. No. Yeah, I could totally see them coming out here and dumping. Well, you figure back in the day, that's the road, heavy woods, no traffic like there is now. You could literally get out and, you know. So there didn't used to be a road like that there? No, that road, it road used to initially be at the entrance. So you would be driving through the woods, literally stop right at the graveyard and just walk right over to the lake. And back in the day, I don't even think this fence is probably here. I actually don't know. You'd have to like go into the historical papers and stuff and see if you could find something on it. Do you know of any like dives that they've ever done here looking for bodies? So I had one of the Cook County uh, Sheriff's Police uh, was telling me that they went in there once looking for bodies. But I think he said they didn't find anything, if I remember right. But that looks like the perfect place for a body. I mean, even if Considering they didn't dump Chicago it Chicago is just basically right up the street from here. Yeah. If they didn't dump it in the water, even, I mean, you go 10 feet into the woods over there, who's going to go over there to look for... Well, even to this day, mm -hmm. there's stories of bodies appearing in the Cook County woods out here. I bet. Like murder victims? Yeah. Maybe coyotes. <laughs> Werewolves. <laughs> well, why don't you... I want to take a look for these people online at those photos. Of the, or the photo of the mobsters. Oh, okay. Because that's super interesting. See that right? I think that's the fence pole. That was actually right at the entrance to the... Oh, yeah. oh to the swamp, I think. Yeah. yeah. But do you see what I'm talking about? How it looks like you can see a suit and a lapel. Yeah. So who took that photo? I took that. You took that? Yeah. I like the ones I take because I know they're real. <laughs> people send me photos and you just don't know... Right. Especially when the photo editing software started getting big. I got a lot of fake photos sent in. Mm. I mean, it really does look like two mafia guys standing there. I yeah, know. I mean, you can see the suits. And it would stand to reason that if they were dumped here, they might not be the happiest. Yeah. They'd want to show up. Uh-huh. I, I try to debunk this like you do, and I don't know how to debunk it. <laughs> how do you? I mean, really. Especially after you said it was years after you'd taken that picture. Well, right? I, I still have thousands of photos I haven't looked at. So you took this photo. This photo was taken. Yeah, I'll show you. We were right. Let's see, where's Moss at? Moss is right there. No, look. Yeah, Moss. See, that that's Moss. That's right there. So the photo was taken from about right here, and where you're standing is where the tree was. 
right now? It's gone now, yeah, that's where that was. Oh, interesting. See, see Marcy right there? Yeah. And this tombstone is that one. There you go. You can identify it perfectly. This one is that one, and that one is there. So it was taken on a tree right there that's not there anymore. You can see it's a dead tree, so it's cleared out. Dang. It's freaky. Yeah, but here's your close-up then. That's so crazy. I just like the expression on her face. I mean, she has, oh, she, she looks like, see she's me. like, oh, they see me. Yeah. <laughs> she probably went back to her ghost house and go, guess what happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's not, it was literally like. See, that's right why here. I take so many pictures because you can actually look at these and know where things are at. Uh-huh. I mean, that has to be the craziest photo of a ghost I've ever seen. Yeah, I know. I'm right here, too. It's really weird how there's so many like translucent figures here. Well, that's like, what Mafia that's what makes her. it nice too, is because you can't fake a translucent. No. Even when you get idiots telling saying you made it up, you can't. How do you make someone translucent? I've been trying to figure that out for years. <laughs> I'd love to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd say this cemetery is haunted? Have a magic trick Definitely. becoming physically it's, translucent. I wasn't feeling it today. Some days it's really scary. Other days it's not. But for a while, I was actually really starting to. Of course, you don't know. I've been here before where it's just like nice as could be. And just all of a sudden, it's like, wham, the veil opens up and it's it feels dark in here. Well, I'm ready to start investigating, man. Me too. We're here right now as a part of our investigation into the haunted mafia spots in the Chicago area. Bachelors Grove Cemetery, where That's we're right. at, they is one of the most the haunted cemeteries on Earth. Here. We've been here investigating for the last couple of hours. The rumor is that this body of water behind us was a prolific mafia body dumping location back in the days when the Chicago outfit was running things here. Now, if you want to see our full investigation at Bachelors Grove, that video is going to be on YouTube. It's either out already or it'll be there soon. Already. But before yep. we head to the St. Valentine's Day Massacre location. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. We're ready. We wanted to come out here and ask a few questions. Um, I do want to state we don't have much time because apparently the cops come and arrest people here at sunset. So we're going to make this somewhat quick. Is anybody here in the water? Oh, do you see that creepy, like, ball thing? Like, floating from the top? Dude, what the fuck? Almost looks like a head. And there's a baby bottle. All right. I'm talking to anybody out here from the Chicago outfit. If you know Bugs Malone, Al Capone, Bugs or maybe Malone. you were murdered and your body was thrown down here. <clears throat> All you have to do. This one. What? On the temple. <laughs> you were thrown in the fish pond? If you've been playing with our devices, you probably know. You just have to go up and touch it like that to answer yes to our question. Were you thrown? Was your body thrown in here? Oh, oh, oh. So, Sukiyaki? So I'll take that as a yes. Your body was thrown in here. Mm. Thank you. Can you please? Dude, what? Look at that. That will be in the water. The hell? Maybe. Can you try to tell us your name, please? Actually, since you used that light just now. Yeah, just like that. Can you, can you touch that again? If you were murdered by guys who worked for Al Capone? Do you remember that name, Scarface?
So you remember Al Capone? Will you? <laughs> Father, what? Dude. What say on the... A question, question, question. L. Yeah, that well, one was Well, Al Capone weird. was like the father, the Don, the head of the family. Did you work for the Chicago outfit? Did you work for Al Capone and all those other mo mob leaders? Can you hit that light again if you work for them? This is f***ing crazy, actually, bro. I did not expect this, like, so quickly. A few more minutes here, yeah, before we hit halfway. Study. So, were, were you killed by them? Owner. Owner. Whoa, that is a f***ing crazy strong hit. So you were killed by Al Capone's Chicago outfit. Whoa, bro! And it's just that one. It's not this one over here. How f***ing weird is that? Well, so, if I had any of try to light it up there, it's weird. one more time, please, sir. If your bones, your body is still in this water behind me. Either one. Tough. Oh. Bro, the one closest to the fucking water. It's like he just walked out of the water and is standing right here. That's Isn't that creepy? <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. Do you wish that somebody would come dive? and find your bones so you can be buried? Thank you for, seriously, thank you for speaking with us like this. Speculation. Ooh. Are you thinking I'm seeing lights? Is Sorry. I'm not friendly. I'm not friendly. <laughs> Were you an Irish guy? Erase it. Erase it? Oh. Dude, it's almost like another mobster's like, I'm not friendly, erase it. Yeah. Telling us that we captured too much. They don't want us knowing that. They don't want people it. knowing. So, can you tell us how you were killed? You can either speak it out loud or how about you try to light up those lights again? Were you... Did they choke you to death? Summertime. Remember they said the summer was when they would probably come out? Mm. Did they stab you to death? <laughs> Any one of them. Conniving. That's like something. <laughs> that's like an older word, too. Right? Steamsters. So they stabbed you to death and threw your body out here. Well, with that being said, it is time to call this. What was folks. your name? Well, uh, I did Dude, do a little bit of a nod off there for here. maybe like a brief moment, but I did come sure. back. But uh, I don't want to accidentally lose a whole bunch of footage and time on here. Mm. So with that said, we'll be coming back to this and rewinding to exactly 134. So we'll be back about a minute, and we can catch the last little bits that we just saw here, and uh, continue through the rest of this next time. So with that being said, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you uh, return here two more days. Uh, and yes, in two more days to catch part two of this. Again, I don't want to uh, lose footage, so. And I don't want to not often disrespect the creator because uh, I do enjoy their stuff. I just kind of, I get too relaxed and uh, in the middle of it sometimes. So uh, when there's lulls, so we'll be coming back to this and we'll finish the last hour and a half. Uh, 
maybe tomorrow night if I have time after our uh, ghost hunting adventures. Or, um, hmm, excuse me, or uh, the day after, maybe before I go to work when I have a little extra time. Either way, need to get some sleep, need to head off, and I will see you all next time. Pleasant dreams.